when hope is gone, undo this lock and send me forth on a moonlit walk. Release restraint level zero. Party. Hi guys, this is the Void of the Ravenclaw. Welcome back to another fanfiction story. Let's get right into this. As we start our story in a uh, laboratory, as you as you see Wonder Woman and Mira all bound against the wall on some sort of metal surface that's attached to the wall, like the like the piece of metal was made for a human being to be strapped onto. As the two heroes are bound by their ankles and wrists by some sort of force field shackles, each time they both win and try to escape out of the bindings, they get a nasty little shock of electricity throughout their whole body. The women turn to a big metal door that's um, barely started to open up as they see a green hair woman with green eyes walk in with a lab coat. I see you two are finally up. You two gave me a great idea. Capturing you. I'm sorry we hadn't... I'm sorry. I'm sorry we had to meet this way, Wonder Woman. Mara? I'm pretty much idolized. Pretty much Wonder Woman over here. And when I came across you, I... When I came to your, across your existence, Atlantean, I was very interested in your species. Why are you doing this? What are you trying to achieve? You know this won't end well for you. What... Whatever evil plan you have you have in mind, the Justice League will notice we are missing. Inko started to laugh at both of them. I have no master plan, as you say. You see, girls, I am unable to produce a child. The thing is, I've always wanted a child. So if I can't... Get a child through the normal means, then I'll, then I'll choose another, as or another method of uh, acquiring a, a child. So that's why you are here. I'm going to be collecting samples of your genetics, combine them all together with mine, and my husband. Then create the perfect child, with my husband's personal doctor. The good old doctor will create the perfect hybrid Nomu. Say Numu, Nomu. Well, that's a little secret, Wonder Woman. I will not tolerate to use my DNA in such a manner. I feel the same way as Wonder Woman. I refuse. Ladies, 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 you seem to be mistaken. You have no choice in the matter. Even, even if you refuse, I will be taking your genetic samples of both of you, if you like it or not. Inko takes out two small devices out of her lab coat and places the device on Wonder Woman's neck and Maris, taking their blood and placing the sample in her lab coat as she pulled out two long tubes and plucked a couple of hairs from... From both the heroes. You see, harmless. I have no intention of hurting the two of you. I don't like getting my hands dirty. It's not that I'm unable to. I've done it several times before. I just prefer to do things the easier way. I'll leave the more violent methods to my dear husband. 
at the end of it, at, well, at the end of the day, I'm still a scientist. And I'm fully aware of your league tracking your location. I distract them long enough, so I'll be taking my leave, ladies. As a black portal opened up, I'll be behind her. As Kara Gary steps through the portal, right in, as he walks over to Inko, right in front of her and bows, my mistress, have you finished your business here? I hope I am not interrupting anything. You're, you're fine, Kara Gary. I just finished up here. Time, time to go home. Understood, mistress. Thanks for the genetic code, ladies. Your friends should be arriving here in a few minutes. Probably sooner, if the Batman's involved. That man is quite stubborn. Ladies, have a lovely day. Shall we, Carrie Gary? Yes, mistress. As you, as Carrie Gary opens another portal up to the League of Villains, as the two of them step through, leaving Wonder Woman and Mira by themselves. All for one. Uh, sorry, give me a second, guys. All for one's whole demeanor changed when he saw his wife step through the portal, as he immediately. Well, immediately told Karagiri to to leave them, to leave them. Karagiri simply bowed, and portaled away, returning to his duties with Tomura Shigaraki. All for one immediately got out from his chair and hugged his wife. So, how was your visit to America? It was very intriguing, but I got, but but I got what I wanted. I just need a vial of your blood, then I can Im immediately start working with the good old Dr. Ojiko. Of course, dear, anything I could help you help to birth our new son come into existence, I'm more than willing to provide any assistance needed. Good answer. Hold still. It might sting a little bit. A little prick like that is nothing. I've had worse. I know, dear. I'm still trying to find a way to fully heal you. That all might dare to hurt my husband. I'll kill him. I don't know how or when, my dear husband. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to drop his dead body in front of you. For you to do, you see fit. And I'll immediately start tracking down every potential successor. Then end their lives. That blasted cork. Either needs to be in your hands, dear husband, or destroyed. One for all is a threat. That placid, that blasted cork is a threat to your plans and mine. It's it's quite all right, dear. As all for one place a comforter in hand on her shoulder. You see, that the very reason you're upset is one of the reasons why I became quite fond of you. We think alike. And we both have strong, well, same burning hatred for that man and in, in, in his cork. Thank you, dear. So what's, so what's, so what's the condition of my new lab? I'm eager to start. It's already been finished. I'd don't understand why you wanted a build a underwater um, laboratory. It's vital to make sure we don't get interrupted. Having that laboratory in the city would be too risky. I, I need something far away from any civilization secluded so we don't get any surprise visits from the Justice League or the heroes from Japan. Like that bastard All Might. You might excuse me, husband, but I have much, I have much work to do. Give me a second, I'll have Care Gary open a portal for you. No need, I have my own way there. 
As she pulls out a small device out of her lab coat, then she presses one of the buttons as a green portal open up right behind her. You actually did it, dear. Congratulations. To, to, uh, to think you were able to duplicate the, the portal, the portal key, capabilities of a mother box. Most impressive. Of course it is. It's me, dear. But it does give the League access to portal technology, so we don't have to rely on that Nomu that you... that you made. Counting on one person, regardless if, the, if it's a Nomu or not, to only able to use teleportation. Don't, don't get me wrong, husband. You work you did with his quirk was incredible. Thank you, dear. I've always... Oh, sorry. Thank you, dear. I've, I've always liked to hear... Thank you, dear. I've always liked to hear compliments from my... From my wife. From my past deeds. Good thing I'm here to cover up some of your flaws in your plans. Sometimes you put too much faith in that Tomura boy. Don't get me wrong, I don't dislike the... I don't dislike the boy. What the... Um, that said, dear, he's far too immature for what... For what role you have planned for him. Don't mind me, dear, I'm just thinking out loud. There's a good possibility he'll get his act together. Hopefully he does. He does it before we get into a serious stuff. Because, currently... If you went, if if you went to confront a hero, that's on a least higher tier, he would he wouldn't last long. His current behavior needs to be corrected. That's why I'm here. I will correct his behavior and make sure he's a proper successor for you, dear. You probably have much work to do. So do I. I'll see you later. As Inko walks through the portal and walks into her lab to see Dr. Ojiko waiting for her, as they immediately begin the process of combining all the DNA that she gathered for the for for the creation of her new son. Well to be created with the blood of Wonder Woman and the Queen of the Atlanteans, Amira. Those two races have superior ge uh, genetic structure than a normal human, so she made sure to make those two DNA strands the, the dominant strands. Making sure he keeps both good qualities from both of the races. Make sure he has a strong body and incredible offense, or off, well, incredible defense and offense, then adding her blood in her husband so the boy could have several quirks. Inko is fully aware he has to be part human to to get quirks. It's never been it's never been performed to give a cork to a Atlantean or an Amazon from Par uh, Paradise Island. And she also will be adding different DNA strands from from all from all kinds of predators that 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 roam the sea. Of course, she's going to use her own blood and blood of her husband. It's going to be her son, after all. He might look like a little bit different, but she'll love. But she'll love him, her son, re regardless what uh, what he what he or she looks like. The weeks and months has gone by. Her son was finally created. She put him in a stasis tube. Then begin to do the process of making him into a hybrid Nomu. The final, the, the, the final phases, uh, uh, at least. Izuku will be stuck in a stasis tube throughout the whole exper experience. Until his body, well, until his entire body adjusts, adjusted to his new form. They place several corks in him. On top of his, sorry, give me a second, guys. 
Sorry. On uh, top of his genetics, he has pretty, uh, um, pretty, a pretty crazy strength. And being part Nomo, his his strength got even in, increased more from being a hybrid. On top of having Wonder Woman's um, DNA and the Atlantean Queen Mera's DNA. And all the quirks she placed into her son will will um will help her husband well will help sorry as her son she plays several different type of type of quirks electric and water base and a couple sound quirks including a, a um regeneration quirk just in case someone actually able to able to hurt her son there's only a couple people on Earth that's capable of that, like that, like that Kryptonian, and possibly the um, po uh, possibly one of, one of one of the Amazons, and maybe one of the Atlanteans. They do have powerful magic. During his process into a hybrid Nomu, they well, like I said before, they've been they're combining more traits or DNA strands from predators. Into Izuku DNA. When he was old enough, she placed him in a huge tank that that was built into the lab. The tank itself is about the size of six pools. The tank gives him plenty of room to move around or swim around. When she finally placed him into the sorry, give me a second. I've messed that up. When she finally placed him into habitat. A couple days has gone by. She closely observed him trying to swim. It didn't take take him long, or it didn't take her long to figure out. Despite his that um that he's a quick learner, it only took him two minutes to figure it out. Despite not performing any vocal reaction. She could already tell that her son, her son's intelligence, well, inherited, inherited her intelligence. Four years, well, four years has passed as she closely watches her son's de development outside of the tank. If anyone enters the tank besides her, They'll, uh, they'll, they'll immediately get shredded to pieces. It only happened a few times during his daily feeding time. One of the, one of the people that were feeding him fell off and, well, Izuku had a lunch, early lunch, that day. As she approached the habitat of her son, she stares down onto the water surface Seeing a shadow coming towards her as she sees her son jump out of the habitat and land right next to her. So you came to see your mother, did you? Come on, dear, it's time for your lessons. As she gently took her son's hand and led him to the uh, to the room right next to the or the room to the right, basically. As she sat him down on a desk. And she begins to teach him several different things. She was relieved, knowing that her son is able to talk, but it's very rare for him to speak up. After a few months of this, she finally deemed him ready for him to explore the ocean. Inka doesn't want to do this, but she knows his predator instincts are starting to show up. Try a... Uh, are starting to uh, reveal themselves. She knows he's going to get a lot more violent if she keeps him in here, in the habitat. Um, the habitat that she made for him. She opened a big metal gate that um that was built in the habitat that leading to the open or leading to the ocean. She gave her son the okay gesture when he looked back at her in the habitat. 
it didn't take him long to enter the sea uh, after he waved his mother goodbye. Mizugu was exploring the sea until he smelled something. Then he immediately stopped, stopped his movements and turned to the direction, the scent he caught. And it, and it was quite tasty to him. Whatever that scent is, it's quite tasty. As you can see his razor sharp teeth in his mouth. He finally arrived. To the sense location, he sees a boat that that has a shark cage in the middle of the water attached to it. As he sees several divers in the shark cage, surrounded by great whites, as they're circling around the cage. The diver couldn't see what swam by. It swam by an incredible speed. He couldn't catch what he couldn't catch a glimpse of what it was. But what, but what, but what he was able to see is a great, a great white chopped in half, missing a good portion of the body. The great whites immediately sense the danger as they back off the humans a little bit. As the divers finally notice the creature that resembles a little boy. As you can see, he licks his lips from, from, uh, from the tasty meat he uh, he just ate. When he chopped that shark in half with his claws, the sharks were being very docile. That surprised the divers it, that um that are currently in the shark cage. Seeing a great a great white behave in such a manner, in well, in that sort of behavior, manner baby behavior, basically the same thing. Like they're scared. The sharks immediately to the sharks immediately retreat. Izuku turned around, seeing the new life forms that um that does resemble his mother. As he swims around the shark tank or cage, without breaking eye contact with one of the, one of the divers, Unfor unfortunately for the divers, well, the divers, one of them did something stupid and aimed their harpoon at the young boy. He immediately. Returned the hostile jester by ripping ripping through the cage and tearing the two divers apart from limb from limb as puddle of blood is forming around the whole shark cage. Izuku swam upwards immediately, jumping out of the water and landing on the deck of the ship. As all the people on the boat turned around to see what landed on their vessel, seeing some sort of boy like monster. With razor sharp teeth and claws, with a huge tail, with two blue horns on top of his head. Izuku lunged at the nearest person, ripping his ri ripping his throat out with his sharp teeth, and eating eating the amount of, amount of meat he was able to get from that, and swallow. Then he immediately shot out several high condensed water shots out of his mouth. The water shots are, are about the size of a, well these ones are about the size of a softball. As it cuts through the skin of anyone that, that, that was unlucky enough to get hit by this attack. Even some of the stray attacks damaged his ship a little bit, cutting right through the metal like it was a piece of paper. Izuku did what a predator is always supposed to do when he sees new prey hunt. Then he then, uh, then he commenced slaughtering every single person on the boat, then feasts on their corpse when he was done with them. After he was done with his meal, he wiped the blood off his cheek with with one of his sleeves of his shirt. That doesn't get wet. That was one of many. That was one of many presents he got from his mother. As he, it's a uh, clothes is basically waterproof. As you jump back into the ocean, trying to find a nice underwater cave to sleep in, after having having a full meal, he's quite tired. He's all tuckered out. 
after slaughtering the whole the whole people the whole um population of that that was on that boat as he finally made his way himself well made his made his way to a um a cave uh, eventually swimming for a good amount of time found a good cave as he curled up in a little ball to fall asleep sometime during the slaughter the bow slowly entered Atlantis territory as a as about four or five hours has passed like I said the boat has been drifting further into Atlantis territory so when uh, when the king of Atlantis Arthur or Aquaman did a uh, day uh, did get in Intel on it he immediately investigated with his wife personally he wants to he he wants to see what's going on with this abandoned boat. As they finally made it to the boat, seeing the carnage, half-eaten corpse, blood everywhere on on the main deck, body parts scattered all around. Arthur was was the first one that composed himself from the scene. So what do you think what happened here? Who attacked these men? No Arthur. Judging by the teeth marks on some of the victims, the flesh, the flesh bites, the bites itself, I don't, I don't recognize the patterns. I don't know what species this belongs to. Maybe some, maybe some sort of new species of predator has finally made himself known. But, but some of these bodies seem to like, or some of these bodies seem to have their chest blasted open with, with something. A good portion of their chest is missing in a couple of these men. Like something blasts right through their chest. Judging by the condition of the ship, whatever did this damaged the ship itself. Whatever, what, sorry, what, whatever is responsible for this, it's quite hostile. It seems to have some sort of ability, judging by the in, by uh, by the imprint of the metal being shot through. By something very high condensed, I'm guessing, judging by the grooves of the damage, I'm guessing he was he was using some high condensed water shots, most likely. We need to be on guard, in case this is a sign of for uh, for things to come. Agreed. Immediately when we get back to Atlantis, I'm sending out several p p patrol parties out to to patrol the area of our borders. Make sure this something like this does doesn't happen in in Atlantis. Read. As the two Atlanteans return to to, to Atlantis to send out patrol parties to keep eye on the borders. While the cause of their panic is sleeping peacefully in one of the caves that are current that are in the outskirts of Atlantean territory. Still ter territory of Atlantis, but not many people venture into that area of the kingdom. Many underwater cities were abandoned because of past wars. With the other kingdoms that that do reside in the ocean. Two weeks has passed, Izuku finally woke up from his slumber, yawning and stretching out his two arms as he finally opened his eyes. As he hears his own stomach rumble, he's getting kind of hungry again. It's time for another feast. As he eventually found himself out of the cave and swam across a large abandoned city, or cities, he eventually decided to make one of, the, one of these one of these cities in any of these ghost towns his lair until he came across he was about to pick a random spot but until he came across a very old castle structure that was built in one of the bigger cities as he found himself in the original location that was Atlantis or what was our the original spot where Atlantis was before they moved the capital 
in a different location. They simply just abandon old Atlantis. So he decided to make the castle his lair. As he spent the next couple days feeding off the smaller well, sorry, smaller ocean life that's in the sea, that adventures in, into his new territory. He's just following his instincts, now protecting his territory from any predators that that would be stupid enough to challenge him. It didn't. It didn't take. It didn't take um, people long to notice that the predators that do reside in Atlantis territory are acting different, like they're scared of something. They uh, they actively avoid the area of Atlantis where he reside. Arthur did send out scout uh, a scout party for only for them to be barely alive when they return to Atlantis. They uh they inform the king, whatever is taking residence in in the old kingdom of Atlantis. It's very hostile, and it claimed it as its as its territory. And it's very hostile to visitors. Arthur wants to figure out what type of predator has made the old city of Atlantis its feeding ground, but he can't send more soldiers in, like the ones that he sent out before. They barely, they, they barely came back the first time. So he gathers some Atlanteans that are skilled hunters against predators and led them with, and led the team with his wife to figure out exactly what is residing in the old kingdom of, kingdom of Atlantis. As you see Izuku on an old throne, chewing on a fish that made a mistake to enter the palace, as you see, the room is, well, shit, well, covered in blanket ends and skulls and from different species like fish and some bigger mammals and a couple human skulls scattered all around the throne room. He immediately stopped eating. He caught some new scent entering his territory, so he decided to check it out as he stealthily observed the Atlanteans that entered his territory right men were entering new ter near ter territory of a predator be on guard according to our recent reports whatever what whatever predator lies here it's extremely aggressive we want to capture it alive if that's possible killing it is a last resort to this um it is a last resort as all the veteran hunters nod at their king in understanding, as they be, as they well, per, well sorry, begin to swim further into the hostile territory, immediately when they enter the city, they can see bones or oh, bones of sea creatures scattered all around. Though what used to be a street is covered with bones. Only sea life they see is the occasional small fish swimming around. Anything bigger was immediately devoured. Mira can see several skeletons of great whites scattered all around the city. She already counted at least five of them so far. When they traveled, when they traveled through the city. Arthur, we need to be mindful. What whatever type of predator claim this territory. It's clearly dangerous. I saw several skeletons of a great great whites throughout the old city. This could get really nasty real fast. If we're taken by surprise. Agreed. As author summon some dolphins, my friends. I need you to, I need to relay any information you could get from scouting the city. But if you find the predator I'm looking for, do not engage. As all the dolphins swim off to do what Aquaman said, Izuku was, was observing the Atlanteans the whole time when they, when they entered his city. 
as he decided it would be best to head back to the lair. They'll eventually make their way there, so he would rather have the home home field advantage. To in well, as he as he's in the old castle, old 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 oh sorry old Atlantean castle in the Atlantean throne, sitting on the Atlantean throne, eating some fish he caught when he was swimming back, as he just sat there on the throne, eating his snack. Waiting for the waiting for waiting for the Atlanteans to approach. Why bother hunting down your prey when your prey will come willing willingly to uh, to you? For some reason, in the throne room, no water is able to get through. So the room itself is completely void of water. But the other cat, but 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 the other areas of the castle is filled with water. He doesn't quite understand what device is doing this. He's curious about it, but he decided he'll check it out later. He's more con he's more concerned with eating right now. So when he gets bored, he'll 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 figure it out. The moment Mira entered the throne room with her husband and the rest of his hunting party, they saw the condition of the throne room: skeletons of all different life scattered all around. Around of and, uh, and she spotted several human skulls. There are so many bones, you sorry. There are so many bones you can't see the ground or the or the tile, as there's no way to sneak in quietly. The moment you enter the throne room, you would have to walk through hundreds and maybe thousands of bones. She simply noticed the humanoid sea creature sitting on the throne room, chowing on. Half eaten fish. A hey boy? Huh. I'll handle this. Leave everything to me. When Arthur approached the throne, he immediately got shot in the chest by some sorry. Got shot in the chest by a highly condensed water shot that came out of his mouth after he swallowed the meat that he he had in his mouth before he shot the water shot. From the barrel of the water shot, well, from, from, from the barrage of water shots, Arthur got thrown across the throne room, hitting the stone wall behind his wife. You got this, do you, dear? Do you need some help? If I told you I got this, I got this. As she back up and watch, watch her husband walk towards the humanoid. Toward Izuku. Now that wasn't very nice, young man. Can you even understand me? I heard you, food. I just don't talk to food. You're very lucky, food, that I am no longer hungry. So I, uh, so I suggest you don't linger too long, or I might want to take a bite out of you. You look like a... You look like one of those creatures... From one, from the boat. But, but from your scent alone, I could tell you're different. But there's a, I don't know what kind, what kind of, what are you? But I bet you're tasty. I might actually take a bite, if you tempt me. So move along, food. I'm not food, you little rude little brat. I am Arthur, King of Atlantis. That doesn't matter to me, food. You could be the king of the surface dwellers. That doesn't change the fact that you're food. When Arthur saw his movements getting off the throne, he immediately disappeared from his view. Then, uh, then he reappeared right in front of, in in in, in front of Arthur, as he took to swipe his tail. Across his face, making him flying backwards, head in the same wall again. When Izuku began to walk towards Mira and the rest of the Atlanteans, they immediately got in a defense pose, protecting, per, uh, protecting the queen, only for all of them except, except the queen, to fall on the ground screaming. Ingo's attacking them with his son sonar ability, his sonar attack. He can choose who. 
who hears it and who doesn't. He has full control of who the radius of who gets affected by it. Leaving everyone on the ground screaming in pain. Leaving the queen completely unharmed. As easy as you just walk past her. For some reason he has no desire to hurt her. Regardless if she's food or not. There's something about that woman gives, gives, gives off the similar feeling that he gets from his mother. Inko. Izuku still unaware, technically, he has three different mothers. As his claws extend, he's immediately, he immediately stopped before, before he could finish off Ar Ar Arthur. He's, he sensed something wrong. Mother's in danger. He immediately rushed out of the throne room and made his w way back to the underwater laboratory where his mother is, where the last location he knows where his mother would be. When he finally approached the underwater lab, he saw the, gla um, the blast doors are still shut. He tried to get his, his mother attention if she's anywhere near the entrance, but there was no sign of her. So he had to rip through the gate by ripping his, well, ripping, well, sorry, digging his claws into the steel door, making a, making a opening for himself as he goes through the habitat and, and jumps out of the water and lands on the lab floor. Only for him to see the lab in ruins as paper is scattered everywhere. Machinery are either sparking or dead. As there's a hole in the wall, like someone punched right through it. Some, as, some black object caught his eye, as he picked up a batarang. That was hanging from, from the side of the wall. He examined it and tried to locate his mother's scent, for, from, from the other scent. Scent, oh, scent in the room. It didn't take him long. To separate the the uh, the other scent, only focusing only focusing on his mother's scent, as he begins following the scent to his mother to the surface, as he went through the city, as he stopped in front of a large building called the Hall of Justice, he stealthily in, he stealthily entered the building. He found out it this building was uh, completely empty. But some strange device that catches eye, as he so as he figured out to um, activate the teleporting device, when he stepped through it, he found himself in the Justice League Tower, that's located in. In outer space, right next to Earth, still in the atmosphere, you know, you you, you know where it is. Their space station, he was too concentrated on the scent of his mother, to you. To even notice he was in he was in outer space. As you see Inko in a containment cell as Wonder Woman is staring daggers at her. What's what's the matter, Wonder Woman? Still mad? It's not like I killed your boyfriend or anything. I just took a little blood. Big deal. Don't bother re reply or replying, Wonder Woman. You're only you will you will only be playing her game if you respond. Exactly what are you after? Who do you work for? You clearly don't work for Lex. So so you have no affiliation with with the Legion of Doom. Sorry to disappoint you, Batman, but I have no intention of revealing what group I belong in. Fine. What is Project Terror? That was the only thing we were able to get off your computers be before you engaged the purge, destroying any evidence what you are working on. Ooh, I always love talking about my darling baby boy. Unfortunately, that's all you're going to get from me. You have more important things to worry about. What do you mean? The alarm started to go off as Martian Manhunter has has detected an intruder 
that that somehow made their way on the League of or oh, the League on um, the Justice League space station. It is quite impressive, my darling little boy found me sooner than I uh, than uh, than expected. Inko could have escaped with with the new cork that she got from her husband. All for one created for her. She could easily use her teleport uh, teleportation cork she got from her husband to teleport anywhere she's been before. The only draw drawbacks, she's only able to teleport herself and someone else. Any more numbers than that, it's her quirk won't work properly. Or par or they won't return. Won't uh, won't return intact. She has to train it to in, to increase the number. She's already have a powerful telekinesis quirk on top of that, so she's she's a she's uh, she's pretty powerful. And with the mod and with the modifications modifications she had on her body, giving her superior strength strength and durability. She's a powerhouse. You just can't misjudge her lab coat, like she's a weak scientist. Everyone in the room that were keeping a uh, keeping Inko. Oh, sorry. Everyone in the room that was talking to Inko. Immediately start hearing, hearing um, hearing things in their mind as all as as all of them start screaming, out in pain. As Izuku is using his sonar attack on everyone in the room, except for his mother and Wonder Woman. He felt the same thing with her, so he left her unarmed. Inko teleported out of the cell and reappeared or portaled out right in front of Wonder Woman as she decked her with her full strength, shooting her against the wall. When she was distract when she was distracted by Izuku's presence, there you are. There you are, son. As she simply ruffled his hair, well, I would love to enjoy your hospitality further. I believe it's time for me and my darling little boy to head home. We'll meet again, Justice League. As she picked up her son and hold him in a, in her arms. You won't be taking you won't be taking me by surprise again, heroes. I don't make the same mistake twice. Until we meet again. As she opened a portal behind her and stepped backwards to go through it, leaving that Justice League still in pain. But because he further be um because he's further away, his quirk eventually de deactivated at as it was a uh, out of his view of effect. As the both of them find themselves in a house near an ocean in a unknown country in a unknown location, as she locked the front door and turned on the lights in the house, you must be hungry. Come on, let's go. Eat. Let's go get you something to eat. Izuku followed his mom to the kitchen and sat down on a kitchen chair as he waited patiently on the kitchen table, watching his mother take out a couple fish that was stored in the freezer. And put him to the sink to thaw out. Then she immediately took out her phone to make a, fo a couple phone calls. A few minutes later, a black portal opened up as Lo and Nomus come carrying some fast food, a bag of fast food. After she got the food, she ordered the she ordered the Nomus back back into the, back into the portal. As she placed the food in front of her son. As that's where we're going to stop it. Hope you guys have a good night and day. Enjoy my time zones. And I'll catch you in the next video.